OpenAI is exploring an existing share sale at a valuation between 80 and 90 billion dollars. That's roughly three times its January valuation when Microsoft made a 10 billion dollar investment in the company. At 80 billion, OpenAI would become the third most valuable private company in the world behind SpaceX and ByteDance. Scott, what do you make of this? I think we're probably at that peak. There, there really is a cycle that's repeated, and that is there's a hype cycle, peak valuation. It goes into kind of this trough of, I forget what it, they call it, disappointment, and then the enduring technologies come back. Yeah, I think we've probably hit peak AI in terms of valuation. I just, Aswat Damodaran, who we've had on the show several times, says that unless NVIDIA finds another market similar to AI and captures 90% of the processing market for a brand new market that needs processors, it's overvalued. And when you look at the fact that in, since the pandemic, the kind of five, the big five have added $4 trillion in market cap and central to all of those gains has been something to do with AI, whether it's increased engagement on reels, whether uh, for meta, whether it's the release of uh, or the investment in ChatGPT or OpenAI from Microsoft and incorporating AI into its office suite. This is all, this has been an AI inspired kind of tech Lollapalooza market cap boom and i think it's peaked and this this reflects and my you know i think it's just crazy that these guys call themselves a nonprofit. ed we need to start a nonprofit and see <laughs> if we can get a valuation of 90 billion dollars on it yeah. so look good for them um uh but i can't help it i'm going to return back to my favorite rider strike uh if they didn't have their heads up their asses um so you know what I did, Ed? I, there was an Atlantic article, and it, this guy highlighted a place you could go in your database, type in your name, and see which of your books, if you're an author, have been crawled by generative AI. And it ends mm -hmm. up two of my books, The Algebra of Happiness, and The Four have been crawled by generative AI. And if you go to ChatGPT and type in something and say, in the voice of Scott Galloway, it returns something that feels kind of eerily similar, including almost exact phrases lifted out of one of my books. Mm -hmm. And my question is, why am I, or specifically Portfolio Penguin Random House, who paid me a large advance for the rights to my book, not getting compensated? And this is what you want to do when you're negotiating. You want to figure out your leverage, and then you want to go after the biggest pile of money. You want to find out in the supply chain where you're adding value that is garnering or creating the most economic value. And what I think they should do, and I'd like to be a part of this, is develop a consortium. We're going to call it the the sisterhood of the dog or the international sisterhood of creators and you go to everyone from nikkei to ft to naspers to le monde to the telegraph time warner disney vox media small and big canadian broadcasting company the pittsburgh gazette and you say we're starting a consortium because we believe generative ai is crawling your ip and not compensating you and you're going to give us a small amount of money that we're going to spend on lobbyists lawyers and enforcement and we're going to convince uh law, we're going to go convince washington lawmakers that it's distinct ip and we need to be fairly compensated i think they'll agree because we'll just give them a little bit of money the wonderful thing about our elected leaders in america ed is that um there's good news and there's better news the, the good news is or i should say there's bad news and good news the bad news is they're total fucking whores the good news is that they're cheap whores and with just a little bit of money little bit of love little bit of honey a little bit of love you can get them, you know, to pretty much do whatever you want. So we get them to recognize this is valuable IP that we should have our, we should own our digital tw twin or the rights to our digital twin. We get everyone to participate. And then we basically show that these companies, all of these AI companies are crawling our gorgeous data and content to inform their LLMs. And by the way, the content's going to have a lot of leverage here, Ed. You know why? I know you're wondering why. Because the LLMs themselves will use their own generative AI to ensure that no other LLM gets too far out ahead of them from a technical standpoint. Because they'll be able to figure out, well, how do I write the code for this feature that this LLM that Llama is offering? I think they're basically going to become almost commodities. They'll be mm -hmm. very hard to maintain technical differentiation. So what's the point of differentiation? the coal that goes in the fucking furnace, specifically the content. Mm -hmm. So if we all rallied together and then packaged it into one licensable agreement, and then we went to all of them, hey, Meta, hey, Alphabet, hey, Apple, hey, Microsoft, how would you like to have access to all of this gorgeous content from all of the most famous authors, podcasters, creators, producers, showrunners, every piece of content out there that has any value 
and only one of you gets to crawl it. And anyone else who crawls it, we have our own generator of AI that will flag it, and we're going to sue your ass and you have to stop. This is that moment. Instead, we're fighting over pennies, see above 5%. We could go get billions. <laughs> if 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 open AI, if ChatGPT is going from 30 billion to 90 billion in four months or five months, how much money do you think one of these entities would pay to have access to the world's greatest content if, we, one, we had total unanimity and we developed leverage through either existing or new IP laws? We got to start thinking bigger. And when I say we, when I say we, I mean content creators, not the 11% <laughs> of people that have decided that, okay, look for the union label. Folks, they're not representing labor real well. Mm -hmm. It's anyways, I, I think this is a big kind of moment for creators around the world. And also I think we should have Barry Diller uh, head the whole thing because everybody's scared of Barry and he's very smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my I'm idea. Not, look imagine... for the union <laughs> label. <laughs> Well, the other news in AI is that Amazon is investing $4 billion in Anthropic, which is another generative AI startup. Uh, the valuation hasn't been disclosed, but the company said in a joint statement that Amazon will be taking a minority position. And as part of the deal, Anthropic will move most of its software to Amazon's AWS data center. Um, do you think that this is a good move by Amazon? Uh, I think it's a good move by Anthropic. I mean, it all comes down to yeah. valuation. I bet the folks at Anthropic were really excited to see OpenAI raising at a $90 billion valuation. I mean, unless they've signed the deal, the valuation at Anthropic has just gone up mm -hmm. because the other guy is raising money at a $90 billion valuation or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it could work. Everyone is partnering up. It's literally like the lights yeah. are about to come up and it's like, okay, I, if I'm going to find anyone to 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 take home, it's, it's now or it's never. They're all pairing up. And... Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the valuation is. They're probably going to offer them in kind. They'll probably offer them a, like a modest amount of cash and then in kind around use of their their cloud, which is, the, I think, the biggest cost line yep. across um, an LLM. So I think this makes sense for both of them, but everyone's pairing up. I like Anthropic. I think, what is it, Claude? Claude, is it Claude or Claude? Claude 2? Claude. Claude. Bonsoir, Claude. Claude. <laughs> yes, yes. Merde, oh, no. Um, that's, that's well, you got to explain what Claude actually is, right? Well, it's it's the voice, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the little AI assistant. It's the AI assistant they for all got Anthropic. Names, I like yeah. the voice. Actually, I'm kind of into Anthropic right now. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, I think it makes sense. They're all pairing up. And Amazon has the processing power. Anthropic has a leader. I think it's probably a better deal for Anthropic because you don't want to be, uh, you know, the folks that, that kind of pair with the largest, it's not the diamond mine, but pair with the largest it's like they're sitting on top of oil, but you need Exxon or BP or someone to come in who knows how to actually turn it into something. Although this is the processing power. I don't know what the analogy is, but they need each other. And there's only there's there's a finite number of the folks that have the kind of processing power that these folks will need uh, to be like serious players. So I think it's I think it's a good deal. It's gonna be really interesting to see what the valuation is. Yeah. It's also good news for you as an investor because uh FDX invested half a billion dollars in Anthropic in 2020. So half a billion? Half a billion. Oh, champagne and cocaine for the dog. <laughs> that's right. So I mean, you still got several, several billions of dollars in crypto to figure out. But Semaphore said that they think that FTX will make at least nine figures for the stake. Nine figures. Again, that's a billion. I mean, that's triple comma, right? Triple comma, a billion. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what Ed is referring to is I've been buying claims against FTX and Celsius for about 25 or 28 cents on the dollar, thinking that once the court administrator finds where all the bodies are buried and the gold coins in the pockets of the dead body, that when they distribute it out, it'll be worth more than 27 cents. And one of the assets that FTX has is what appears to be a billion dollar stake in Anthropic. Half a billion. Half a billion. From, God damn yeah, it, Ed. I, mean, that's what I, I thought said. it was a billion. You just said it was Half a nine a figure investment. Wait, well, that's what, that's what Semaphore is saying they think it is. The trouble is that no one knows what the valuation of this company actually is. They've been so... Right secretive about valuation disclosures but that's how much they invested back in 2020 so who knows what that's what that's actually worth now hmm. they invested they invested 500 million that's right okay if they invested 500 million two years ago mm -hmm. oh ed ago. ed let's yep. just shut off the pod now we don't need this shit <laughs> we do, we're heading to ibiza <laughs> all right have I you ever done so. three hits of x in one night <laughs> let's do it baby I Let's like me and I like you. 
<laughs> okay, and this music sounds great. No, that's okay. Five hundred million Anthropic two years ago. That's probably worth. I shouldn't. Yeah, you know, I'm literally texting the guy who finds these deals at FTX. FTX. That's it. That's that stake has got to be worth four to ten billion. It's up at least eight pole in the last two years. I would imagine, especially with this hysteria.